Hey, my name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. I'm a new web developer, but I've realized that by teaching through things I'm learning, it helps me get a get better grasp on them, and uh, hopefully also can help others who are kind of near the same place I am. Uh, that means that if you have questions, you're welcome to ask them, and uh, if you have suggestions, I am always eager to hear uh, what I could do better or differently. Um, what I want to show you today is how I use uh, something called Gulp to compile my SCSS down to SAS or down to CSS, and uh, we're going to do several things with it. Now you might be saying like, aren't there plugins that do that for you? And that's true. Um, the thing is, sometimes you want to do multiple things at the same time, like you want to minify images or minify JavaScript. And so you can actually write all those things in a Gulp file or any kind of task runner, like Grunt is another one. And uh, as you run that, it'll just watch all those directories for you and automatically minify all your JavaScript, all your CSS, all your uh, images. And it can do all that for you kind of all at the same time with one command. And so I found that a lot easier and I kind of get full control over exactly what that looks like. Uh, so I figured I'd show how that works here. And I've just got a basic HTML page set up and I've linked it to what will be under here, this CSS file. Um, we're going to take this style, um, SCSS file, compile, compile it down to CSS, minify it, rename it, and add it to that directory. Um, right now you can tell I've got um, not a whole lot going on here styling wise, um, but I've written this kind of custom SAS um, underscore SAS, uh, CSS file in here. And uh, that's what we're looking at right here. And it's got several things like it's got um, a SAS variable, it's got flex, which we'll need to auto prefix and add some support from for earlier browsers for. Uh, it's got nested things, uh, like under this card link, it's got some nested things. Uh, it's got a mix in here from SAS. All these, if you're curious kind of how I structure this, is I just have these underscore files, like here are all my breakpoint mixins, and all of these kind of get pulled down and imported here. So this is the file we'll actually watch, but it'll pull in basically anything in these folders. When I actually do stuff for production, I usually keep only import stuff in something called like essential uh, SCSS or something like that that's just above the fold section and load that on page load. And then I keep everything else and load it after the page loads to make things a little faster. So that's kind of the structure of what I've got set up here. Now, obviously, what we want to do is grab all this and put it here. So how do we do that? Well, I've written a little kind of instruction manual here to hopefully be a help to us. And there's six steps we're going to take today. First thing we're going to need to do is initialize a Node.js. Um, yeah, we need, a, need an initialized node in this directory. So we can, if you don't have Node.js, you can download it pretty quickly like any other program uh, from their websites. I think it's nodejs.org and it installs easily. So you just need that on your machine. With that on your machine, you can do npm init. I'm going to do dash y, which answers all the standard questions here for me as yes, which otherwise I would just hit return through all of them anyhow. You might have noticed it created this package.json file. And this, uh, so far, it doesn't have too much in it, but you'll see in a moment that that will be important. All right, the next thing we need to do is install Gulp itself. Uh, now, we need to install it first globally on our machine. I've already done that. So I'm going to come in here, and if I hit Command K, it clears that out for me. I'm just going to install it in this directory. You need to install it in both. Since I've already done the first, I'm going to leave that alone. But every time you want to run Gulp or use Gulp, you have to install it in whatever current directory you're working in. So I'll do that. And a couple of things are going to happen. As it's grabbing all this stuff for Gulp, it's going to add a folder called Node Modules. You see, it just did that right there. And it's got tons of stuff in here. And we're going to add to that with plugins that we use. Now, if you have uh, this hooked up to like GitHub or you've got a, um, a Git repository linked to this or inside this directory, you want to make sure to add this to your .git ignore. You don't want to track this over the internet for you. And you might wonder like, well, what happens if I lose all this stuff? Well, that's what this package.json does for you. You may have noticed that when we did npm install gulp for our actual directory here, we added dash dash save dash dev. What that does is it adds it as a dev dependency. And as long as you track this package.json file, 
it'll know what you need and prompt you to, to download those before or when you try to run this Gulp script uh, that we're going to write here in just a moment. So we've installed Gulp. Now we need to install a bunch of Gulp plugins. This is what allows you to do certain things with Gulp. And we're going to do the same thing, npm install dash dash save dash dev, and we've got four different dependencies. And as I install these, I'll explain what they do. This SAS will compile our SCSS down to, SAS, uh, down to CSS. Auto Prefixer adds support for earlier versions, earlier browsers. Clean CSS, there are other ones, but this one uh, minifies your CSS. And then Gulp Rename allows us to rename the file. And the general workflow is we're going to take anything that's in this kind of root of this SCSS folder, and we're going to tell Gulp to watch it, and then it's going to send it straight through this pipe. It'll run SAS on it, then we're going to add Auto Prefixer, then we'll clean it up, minify it, then we'll rename it, and finally we'll exit it out of the pipe and tell it to go here. So that's what we're going to do next. All right, we've done one, two, and three, and now we're going to come down to this number four. We need to create this file called gulpfile.js. So we can do this a bunch of different ways. You can just right click um, over on the left here, but I'm just going to add it through the terminal. And let's open this up. All right, now this is where all the magic happens. And we need to do uh, several things here. First, we need to list our dependencies. Second, we'll need to write a function. That's going to be the function that we're getting everything to call. Then we're going to write a watch task so we don't have to manually call it by ourselves every time. And then we'll go ahead and write a default gulp task. Our dependencies, this is fairly straightforward. Um, we're going to, first of all, require gulp itself. And there are several things we need to require from gulp. This may or may not be called destructuring. Um, I'm forgetting now, but uh, if you know, let me know. But basically, these are things that we can use from the actual Gulp uh, plugin. So we're going to use those. We're also going to require, let's see, let's, because it's called SAS, let's go ahead and do this. But we're going to require all those plugins that we just installed. And so this is fairly straightforward. Um, let's just call these all the same thing. Let's call that prefix. Uh, well, I guess it was called auto prefixer. But we'll just call it prefix so we don't have to type such a long word. Uh, we'll come in here. What was this? This was our minifier. So we'll call this minify. And this was that third uh, plugin that we installed. And it was called clean CSS. And finally, we had that gulp rename. And we'll just call this rename. OK, so those are our dependencies. Next, we need to write our function. This will be what actually does all the hard heavy lifting. So this function we'll call uh, compile CSS. First thing we're going to do is write this return statement, grab the source, and this would be where we want it to watch. So we're going to have it watch our source folder, our SCSS folder, anything inside that that has just a plain .scss extension. OK, now we're going to send it through the pipe. So this is fairly easy. What we're going to do is just run it through each of those plugins. So we've got that SAS plugin. We've got. The next one was prefix. The next one was minify. And finally, uh, rename. Now, the rename one, we have to tell it, actually give it some instructions. How do we want it to rename it? And so we'll pass in this path variable. And we will tell it to, if I can get it to work here, return. And here's the kind of the path we're going to, the instructions we're going to give it. All right, the directory name. These are the different uh, things that we can pass in uh, with this rename. If you, if you want to know more about rename, just look up gulp-rename, and it'll give you uh, these details. Uh, let's see, base name, path.base name. And what we're basically saying is, hey, I want you to take whatever the file is called, keep that name, but we want you to add .min to it, so like style.min. And then lastly, even though it is a CSS file, we need to actually tell it, here's how we want you to name the file. OK, last thing we need to do is tell it to exit the pipe. So here's where we want it to exit. And that's going to drop it right here in this directory where we want it to go. OK, so that's our function. And that was actually the hard part. We've done all the hard work now. We've got to do just a couple of things. First, we're going to write this watch task. And we can call it whatever we want. We'll call it watch task because that's what it's doing. 
this watch is we're pulling from up here. And what we want it to watch is the same thing that we have right here. Watch this same area. And whenever you see that, anything changed there, we want you to run that compile.scss. Now, if you leave it like this, you're actually running it manually here. What we want to do is call that function. So we're going to actually let the watch task call it for us. So we'll just reference it like that. It'll call it uh, for us, which is what we want. Okay, and the last thing we want to do is write this, oh, this default gulp task. So here's how you write this, and you can look at more at gulp online if you want more instructions here. We're grabbing series from up here, and we're saying compile SESS. Once again, we don't want to add those parentheses because that'll run it manually. We want it to do it for us. And then we want to do the same thing with watch task. Let it run it for us. Okay, so with all that set, here's what we're doing, just to make sure we're extra clear. We are saying, hey, here's our dependencies. The function we want to run really through all these things, uh, either we can manually call this and compile this, and it will take in anything. This is the start of the pipe. It'll run it through all four of these plugins, rename it, and then here's the exit to the pipe. Now, we don't want to run that manually every time, so we created this watch task. This watch task watches the same exact area as our um, function and then runs the function for us. Uh, writing this as a default gulp task means that we can just type gulp and it'll do everything for us automatically. Uh, it's going to first of all run our function and second of all run our watch task, which will just perpetually run until we stop it. Okay, so if we did everything correctly, we've got one step left if you notice, but we'll, I'll show you that in a moment. We should be able to type gulp and everything should just work. Awesome. All right, so let's see if that worked. I'll come over here and let's see. Let me save this and you see it ran through all that. That watch task ran again, compiled it again. And now let's see if we, what we got going on over here. Why it's not running for us. Let me start it up again just in case. It says it is compiling it. But I don't see it. Well, that's a strange one. I've never seen that before. Let me make sure I named everything correctly. Oh, you probably need to add this because you see it is running it, but it created a dot dist and added it up there. Problems. All right, <laughs> that's not going to work. Let's come in here, run our gulp task again. There we go. And there is our CSS that's been minified and it's been converted to CSS. And now if we come in here and we refresh this, you see, there we go. Everything's working great. Now you may have noticed that that auto prefixer didn't do anything. Uh, even though we added it and ran it through it, it did nothing. And that's because you actually have to add one more thing to your package.json file. We'd expect things like a web kit um, auto prefixer or, or something like that. Adding, we need to add then one final thing to our browser list here. This package.json file, we're going to tell it, hey, um, we want you to look, whenever you run anything that adds auto prefixers, grab the last three versions that we need. So if I come back in here and save this again, open this style.min here, we should see See if I can find a, find a web kit. Not yet. Maybe let's change something here. Let's call this dark. We'll call our... And switch it back to... What do we have this on? Light, I think? That was just the color I'm, I'm grabbing from this variable here. And... Still no WebKit. All right, let's come back here and see what we did wrong. Package.json, last three versions, browsers list, added this comma here. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Last three versions. Let's switch to last five versions. See what that does for us. Okay, so with that saved, let's run our gulp command one more time. Kind of restart up, restart that up. Let's just delete this. And then see what happens. We run it again. 
drops it in here. There we go. There's our WebKit. I'm not sure what was going on, but uh, maybe adding back five versions was what we needed. So you see it's adding these dependencies for older browsers um, so that we can just focus on writing standard uh, SaaS and not worry about the rest of that. So hopefully that was a help to you. Um, once again, this all works just as expected. And all we have to do is write SAS. And it'll grab all that, compile it, and identify it. And uh, that's all thanks to this little function that we wrote right here and these plugins uh, that Gulp is, is running for us. Hopefully that was a great help. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And uh, I will see you next time. Happy coding.